Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to episode eight of the Twitter tutorial series. Uh, in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to implement a second set of tweet cells right underneath our users inside of the home controller class. So let me go ahead and show you guys what this sort of looks like right now. All right, so inside of the current application, we have just a list of users and nothing right above and nothing down below. And uh, let me tap over to the completed app right here. And you see a section up above with just two users and right below is the second section which contains currently three tweets. All right, so trying to implement this behavior uh, using the standard cell registration process is kind of hard and kind of tedious. Well, it's not that hard, but it involves a lot of code. So in today's lesson, I'm going to show you guys how to easily accomplish this task using the LBTA components framework, all right? So let's go ahead and begin. Uh, the first thing I want to kind of mention here is this background color that is behind all of these cells. So this nice blue tint color, that's kind of in the Twitter design, right? And so to kind of bring that back to our application here, we just need to set the collection views background color. And so let me go ahead and go back to home data source controller. I'm going to type right here, collection view, to collection view dot background color equals some kind of color. So the RGB value for that uh, light blue tint is actually 232, uh, 236, and 241. So 236 here. And I'm gonna run this app to get that nice blue background color inside of the collection view, which when the app is fired up and ready to go here, we get that nice blue color. But the cells are kind of showing completely uh, through that blue color like this. So to fix that issue, let me go to user cell I'm going to go to set of views here, uh, set of views. I'm going to say background color is going to be dot white. And also likewise with the header and the footer, let me change that to dot white as well. So background color equals dot white. Let me just copy that, it makes it a little bit faster and paste that inside of the header, footer and the cells in between. So running the app now, you'll see the background color of that light blue tint. And then you get all of your cells that have this white uh, background color uh, behind it. So pretty good stuff. And now the more important thing to kind of focus on is this second section of tweets right here. So using the LBTA components, how do we accomplish this type of behavior inside of our app? Well, it's pretty easy if you go back to home data source right here and notice that we have a couple of methods that we have already uh, overridden. And one method is number of items that belong inside of each one of these sections right here, right? So you can also override something called number of sections and return some other value. So this is going to return two and give us two sections. Now the default return value is just one. So that's why we get that one uh, section at the top. And now we have two sections, right? But they're kind of duplicated right now. So that's pretty good. That's a pretty good place to start. And uh, the first thing I wanna do is to kind of disable this header and then this footer down here. You notice inside the completed app, only this section right here contains the header and the footer, and you don't really get a header and footer inside of this second section. So to kind of disable this and that, let me go back to home data source controller. At the very bottom, we have reference size for header, and then we have ref size for footer. So to eliminate these two views, it's pretty simple if you uh, say if section equals one, which is the second section. Remember sections uh, start from zero and then they increase from zero. So let me just return something called dot zero. So I'm gonna copy that and paste that for the footer as well. So I'm gonna run this right now. So some of you guys might be asking, what is dot zero? Well, CG size has a, vi a value on it, a static method called a zero, which gives you the width and height of a CG size object with a value of zero. So giving that to the collection view now, you notice that there is no longer this who to follow and show me more for this sex, uh, second section down below. So good stuff there. And uh, one thing that you'll kind of notice is that this show me more is kind of stuck to the first cell in the second section. And uh, the design really should look like this instead right here. So there's a gap and it shows the background color of the collection view. So how do I uh, go about accomplishing that little task right there. So there is a really nice trick that I kind of just 
developed on my own. Some of you guys might consider this a hack, but I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the home data source controller. And instead of returning a 50 for the footer right there, let me return a value of, let's say, 64. So running this app now, the footer is going to increase by 14 pixels in height, which is going to give me a taller footer, which gives me this right here. You notice it's a lot taller than it was before. And with the extra 14 pixels, let me go back to the footer. So user header footer, user footer. And the way that it's being anchored, the bottom constant is a value of zero. Let me bump it up to 14, which gives me an initial 14 pixels of padding underneath the text label. And so that's going to push the text label up, which looks kind of like that right now. And what this means is if I turn off the background color for that footer, it's going to have a complete light blue tint as the background color. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in another white view right behind it, but it's only going to reach uh, somewhere right here in the cell. So with that type of logic, let me see if I can type that out. Let a white background view equals UI view like so. I'm going to set white background uh, views background color to dot white. And now I'll add it into the sub view of the cell with white background view. And let me just anchor it right below right here. So white background view, anchor to the cell's top anchor, the cell's left anchor, and then the cell's bottom anchor. Let's see, bottom anchor like that. And then the cell's right anchor. And the top constant will be zero, left is zero. And then the bottom will be a value of 14, right zero and width and height is also zero. So this background view is going to live in the cell, but it's going to be 14 pixels away from the bottom. So that's what you get, right? So this is a nice trick to kind of get the background color to show through behind each one of these sections. And that's how you kind of do that. So the next kind of question is, how do I render uh, a second or a different type of cell inside of the second section here. So that's uh, going to be the easiest thing ever if I just first create a new cell right here and just call it tweet cell. And then I have this second cell. So for the cell, let me just import LBTA components here so I can say class tweet cell, and this will be a data source cell, which if you guys remember, data source cell is part of the data source kind of controller framework that's included inside of LBTA components. And inside of here, let's overwrite setup views, calling super setup views. And just for a demonstration, I'm going to set the background color to a red color. Okay, so now that I have this second cell, I can go back to home data source and let's look at cell classes right here. So this returns an array of cells. If I just place in here the tweet cell of, uh, or in the second slot, I'll place a tweet cell and now run the app. So this is going to use user cell for these top cells right here. And then for the second section, it's going to use tweet cells. So notice how we didn't have to set up any registration of any IDs. This framework just handles all of this for you. So that's kind of how you get a second set of cells inside of your app. So let me go ahead and turn off that hideous red color and just turn it into white and then Try to run the app now just to make sure everything is the right color. So tweet cell is now being rendered into the second section right here. And uh, one thing I want to do is to go ahead and change how many cells are being rendered right here. But first, let me turn on tweet cells. Let's see, separator line view dot is hidden equals false. So remember, there is a separator line view inside of each one of these data source cell guys. And uh, this is just there to make it very easily to separate your cells like that. So you'll notice that we have three cells inside of the second section. And the reason why we have three cells is because inside of home and data source, number of items for each one of these sections right here is returning users.count, which is a value of three. To return a different value, you would just first check if section is equal equal one, which is the second section, we'll just return a value of, let's say one. So that's going to give us one cell inside of the second section, 
which if the application ran a little bit faster, I would have to wait. And then now it looks like this right here. So just one cell. And that's kind of how the home data source works. To do this a little bit more uh, closer to what production code would look like, you would say let tweets be of some kind of an array. I'm gonna give it a string array of tweets one. If I can type this out. And then tweet two. So now I have two things inside of that array, which means that if I go back to this right here and return tweets.count instead of a hard-coded value of one, I get two tweets inside of my collection view. So it looks like this right here, and now you get two tweets right there. You notice how this line is really, really dark. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to tweet cell and change the separator line to be the separator line. No, that's not what I want, separator line. Brown color is some kind of color. And for all these separator guys, uh, they are of RGB value 230, 230, and 230. So running that, you're gonna get a much lighter line between each one of these cells right here. So that's kind of how that works. Um, the other thing I want to kind of show you guys how to do is, well, you guys might be asking, well, how do I now render out a bunch of stuff inside of these tweet cells? So if I go back to the app right here, you notice that it has this profile image view on the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to user cell and I'm going to steal the profile image view from this class and copy it and paste it into the tweet cell. So just borrow it for a little bit. And now I want to add it into this tweet cell pretty easily. If I also go back to user cell and take the anchoring of the profile image view like so, and uh, just put it down here somewhere. So let's say anchor it down there. And also I'm going to add the sub view of the profile image view. If you forget to add the sub view, this will actually crash your application because the anchoring system needs to have a super view before it knows how to anchor itself. So tweet cell now pretty much looks kind of like the user cell above. And then we're going to figure out how to lay out the rest of the items, uh, such as the tweet information for the tweet cell. All right, so that's kind of where I wanted to stop uh, on this video in terms of explaining the tweet cells. Uh, one thing I do want to clean up here before I let you guys go is this little nav bar right here. It's a little bit of a nuisance and an eyesore whenever you, you kind of see that the, des the design doesn't match up. So this bar right here is really, really thick. And if you open up the Twitter app, you'll notice that the line of above right there is really, really thin and it's kind of faint. Um, so let me show you guys how to do that right now. So the idea is I wanna first remove this line right here because the nav bar by default comes with this line and it's actually a shadow. So let me go back to, let's say, home data source controller, this nav bar extension. And remember, this is where we set up all of the nav bar elements. So let me go and uh, modify set up remaining nav items and say this right here, nav controller dot nav bar. Let me just set shadow image equals this UI image that contains absolutely nothing. So it's just kind of a dummy instance of a UI image. And so setting that actually doesn't really get rid of the line. You have to do one more thing, which is the nav bar set background image of UI image like that and default for the bar metrics. So some of you guys are probably asking, well, where the heck do, do these lines come from? I actually don't really know. I had to Google search for uh, this information myself and then found it on Stack Overflow on how to replace that line. So this totally removes that line. And to add our own line, we will go inside of this function again. I'm just going to add it into the view controller's view. So view right here is the view controller's view. I'm going to add this sub view right here, which I'll create. I uh, say nav bar separator view like that equals UI view. And this nav bar will have that same background color of UI color. Let's see R 230, 230, and 230. Let's add in this nav bar separator view. Finally, we have to anchor it into these, uh, the view with a view's top anchor. And basically I'm going to clamp it to the top of the view to the left and the right and then specify a really thin height. 
So view dot left anchor right there and bottom anchor is nil. Right anchor is the views right anchor and we'll have top constant zero, 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 and zero for the width and 0 0.5 for the height. So I'm gonna try to run this now and hopefully it's going to render out a really thin line that separates the nav bar from the rest of the collection view, which looks like that. All right, so that's going to be it for today's video. Hopefully you guys found this technique of rendering different cells inside of our collection view helpful. And hopefully you guys can use the same technique to kind of build out your own applications. Remember to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. In the next video, I'm gonna show you guys how to further flesh out the tweet cells so that they look a little bit better and matches our design much more. So that's going to be it for today. Uh, keep on coding, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Uh, oh yeah, remember, source code is down below. Bye, guys.